Okay, see, in income from salaries, we did basic salary allowances and we have just started with provident fund, okay? Now, see, in provident fund, as I said, we have to study three things. First, meaning of provident fund, means the concept of provident fund, then types. After that, we have to study taxable or exam, okay? So, see here, the last lecture I had explained how does a provident fund operate for that this was a drawing, okay? That from your salary, some portion is deducted and it is set aside in provident fund which is called employee's contribution and that much amount employer will also contribute from his pocket. That is called employer's contribution and every year you will get interest on that. Why do you get interest? Because fund money is invested somewhere and wherever you are invested on that you will get interest and then one day all this accumulated amount will be received by the employee and that day will be either retirement or death whichever comes first okay and this is called lump sum amount received on retirement okay then after this we have studied three types of provident fund statutory provident fund recognized provident fund unrecognized provident fund statutory provident fund means it is in government service but in private service provident fund may be there may not be there and if it is not there forget it and if it is there it can be rpf or upf it is RPF when if the fund money is invested as per government. government directions and basically why government wants that fund money should be invested as per their directions so that staff money is safe okay otherwise government says we are not interested in interfering this private sector people we are concerned about staff's money the money should remain safe that's why we expect that you invest fund money as per our directions and if you invest as per our directions, the fund will be recognized by government. Otherwise, it will be unrecognized provident fund. And what difference it makes, you know, if it is a recognized provident fund, the income arising from that will become exempt. Although not fully exempt, but it will be exempt. Okay. And if it is unrecognized provident fund, it will become fully taxable. Okay. Now, see, this much we have done till last lecture. Now, one by one, I will take all provident funds with an intention to discuss whether it is taxable or exam okay so see i have made three drawings here first drawing is for statutory provident fund okay and the second drawing is for recognized provident fund and after some time there is one more drawing wait unrecognized provident fund this way i will be explaining three drawings okay and now this drawing is made for what purpose to explain whether taxable or exam so see one by one first is statutory provident fund now whenever statutory provident fund comes in the question one thing is for sure employees are government employee okay and then in the question they will give you four things see whenever provident fund comes maximum four things will come what four things employees contribution employers interest and lump sum amount so now imagine these four things are given in the question and the provident fund is statutory provident fund. So see one by one the effect of all. First, employee's contribution if it is given in the question, you will simply ignore it. Means in the statement which you prepare, you will not give the effect of employee's contribution. Why? Because it is our expense. It is not our income. Yes. See employee's contribution, we don't write in the statement. You know why? Because employee's contribution is what? It is the thing which is deducted from your basic salary. Employee's contribution. How does employee contribute? Does he specially bring some money? It is deducted from his salary. And as you know, last lecture I told you, whenever basic salary, something is deducted, we don't write the net amount. We write the gross amount. So imagine when basic salary, we have written gross. So employee's contribution is part of that gross basic salary only so imagine you write basic salary also and then you pass the entry of employees contribution also it will amount to double effect okay so since basic salary we are already made a policy to write a gross amount so gross amount automatically means from that only employees contribution is set aside so it is not a new item it is a part of basic salary so if someone says why do we ignore this the simple reason is it is a part of basic salary and basic salary we always write in the statement and the top of the statement 
so we don't have to record this separately it will amount to double effect okay so see this is ignore but tell me what about employers contribution and interest does it become part of basic salary or these are different things different. these are different because see employers contribution means employer will separately contribute from his pocket means your basic salary is different plus employer separately contributes from his pocket so it becomes a new income for the employee so it will have to be recorded separately in the statement even interest becomes a new income for the employee although employee is not receiving the interest now but in your account if interest is credited your income is accrued see these amounts which are deposited in provident fund you are not receiving now but once these amounts are credited and deposited in your provident fund account can't we say our income is accrued and income is taxed on accrual basis but this will not be taxed it will be exempt as we decided earlier that in statutory provident fund everything will be fully exempt see if government wanted to tax this they would have made taxable means this amount only would have become taxable even if this amount you are not received now are you understand why i am saying this amount you are not received see this is right now deposited in your provident fund account when will you receive on retirement or death right now this amount is simply deposited but when this amount gets deposited in your account don't you feel happy you feel yes some income has been earned although i have not received but i have earned the income but this income is tax free so see what i have written here it is fully exempt fully exempt in short this thing you will not record in the statement because it is automatically included in the basic salary it is a part of basic salary but these two things are not part of basic salary these are separate items employer separately contributes for you interest is also separately deposit in your account so these are separate item so you have to record separately in the statement okay then this will happen every year every year this will be ignored every year this will be exempt every year this will be exempt and then after 20 25 years when employee retires he will get a lump sum amount and that time time also it will be fully exempt at that time also it will be fully exempt because under statutory provident fund the tax will never come but see lump sum amount received will be exempt under section 1011 there is a section for this 1011 now looking at 1011 you will feel sir this section was there somewhere else it was there in interest on ppf so even for spf the section is same you know the logic of same section is what public provident fund is an account for a general public but it is an account owned by central government it is maintained by central government and the statutory provident fund is also in government job so there is some common factor see there is a big difference between ppf and spf ppf is for general public even a child can have a ppf account because that is for general public but spf is it for general public or employees employees, employees work under government so although both are totally different things but there is a common thing that whether it is ppf or spf it is an account ma maintained and managed by central government and since it is government's account because for it is some government account ppf is for general public this is for employees but since it is a government account the section is common 1011 okay see see people work see as a doubt that people working in bank they are government employee yes see all the banks which you hear as nationalized bank nationalized banks means what owned by central government once we say a bank is nationalized like bank of baroda state bank of india punjab national bank these are called nationalized bank and nationalized the meaning of that is what owned by government so all the bank employees are government employees okay so we had a doubt about bank employees so anyways where were we we were at this amount lump sum amount this is fully exam under section 1011 so spf is over See, this I had already told you that it is going to be fully exempt. 
now i had explained in detail that you will find four amounts in the question employees contribution employers contribution interest and if the question is on retirement you will find lump sum amount also okay and this you will ignore but this you will write in the statement see fully exam is you have to write in the statement but amount column dash this also you will record in the statement in the particular column you will record interest on spf but in the amount column dash even this you will record in the statement but in the amount column dash but in bracket here you can write exam under section 10 11 see you will have a doubt sir why no section over here see here also you can say 10 11 see this thing and this thing are same why tell me at the end what you get amount which is deposited it is the same amount which you get see this this arrows and this arrow are not same it is just this is the sign of you are depositing the money in the account and this is the same amount you are receiving so technically speaking if you say sir what should be the section of this you can say 10 11 only but i would prefer not to write 10 11 everywhere for lump sum amount we will write 10 11 and if during the service employer is contributing interest is being deposited in your account just write exam but still if someone say no sir some section has to be there you can say 10 11 but actually i don't want to get confused in multiple items under 10 11 you will get confused so let's make a system for ppf we will say 10 11 and for lump sum amount we'll say 10 11 But still, if someone says so, what about this? So for this also, technically the section is 10, 11 only because this is the same amount which has become a lump sum amount at the end. And for that, lawyer said section is 10, 11. Okay. So statutory provident fund is done. Now next is what? Recognized provident fund. Now in recognized provident fund, it will be important because this is partly exam, partly taxable. so partly means you have to understand how much exam how much taxable obviously some formula some limits will be there okay so see even that i will explain with the help of a drawing okay now whether the question is on statutory provident fund or recognized provident fund you will always find four standard items literally you should buy at this provident fund means you can expect four things employees contribution employers contribution interest and lump sum amount but obviously this lump sum amount will come only in a question where employee retires okay see although you get this on death also but usually when they make a sum they don't make a sum of death because if employee dies there will be no income from salary then everything will go to the family member and for family member it will be income from other sources but the treatment will be same whether you wait all my suspenses there is some glitch wait okay so now recognized provident fund even in recognized provident fund you will find this four items okay so one by one what about employees contribution ignore it whenever you see employees contribution you should feel it is deducted from basic only and basic we don't write net we write gross so this is automatically included in the basic salary in fact it is a part of basic salary so this should not be recorded because we have already recorded basic salary then what about employers contribution wait something is
don't know what's happening. not able to select anything Some viruses go. First time this has happened. Pencil is also charged. You keep studying something, huh? Okay, fine. It's fixed now. Okay, then look. So, employee's contribution, but again, the same problem. Employees contribution you will ignore, okay? And then employers contribution interest, this you cannot say you should ignore it because these are not part of basic salary. These are separate items, okay? This is separate because this is separately contributed by the boss and this interest you get from wherever the money is invested, okay? So these are separate items to be separately recorded. But since these are partly exam, so now you have to understand how much exam. So, see, there is a formula for this. Look, for employer's contribution, there is a formula. It is exam up to 12% of basic salary plus dearness allowance plus turnover commission. Now, you will wonder why it is like this 12% of something, something. Because, see, in real life, you know what happens? 
whenever employer contributes for you in provident fund he will contribute as a percentage of your salary see imagine i am a boss and i have got 1 lakh employees and every employee is of different category some employees are of lower category some employees are of senior position and some are middle class position so every employee status is same or different different and i cannot say like this for every employee i will contribute 1000 rupees I cannot fix an amount of say thousand or ten thousand. How much I will contribute that depends upon the status of the employee, and that depends upon employee salary. So in real life, what you happens, you know, whenever employer contributes, he will contribute certain percentage of your salary. It can be fifteen percent, it can be five percent, or whatever. But the culture in companies is what you know they contribute as a percentage of your salary but how much percentage there is no fixed rule for that that depends upon company to company for example if i am your boss i might decide that whatever is your salary i will contribute 20% of that in your provident fund so it is my rule 20% but then what law says 20% is too much if employer contributes up to 12% it is fair enough it is reasonable so that much we will exempt also because we are also feeling good that employer is contributing for the benefit employee he should do that because after all it is for employees old age and for employees old age every company should do this and whenever government also agrees with some things they are ready to exempt it but then government has a limit that if you contribute 20% of their salary 15% of salary then sorry we are not going to exempt it fully we feel contributing up to 12% is reasonable and that to 12% of basic dns allowance turnover commission whereas in actual life i might do like this i will contribute 20% of your basic only so what happens in actual life there is no rule for that it depends upon company to company but what a student has to remember whatever happens in real life the exemption is 12% of basic salary plus dns allowance plus turnover commission okay that is the amount of exemption and then interest even for interest you know there is a limit as i said this is all partly exempt right and partly exempt means there will be some limit so interest also will be partly exempt and this is exam up to 9.5% what is the 9.5% no oh, it's the rate of interest here you should not say the 9.5% of what see this 12% was of basic dns allowance turnover commission but the 9.5% which i said right now it's the rate of interest means what law says if in your provident fund you are getting interest at the rate of 9.5 will exam then it is a reasonable rate of interest but if you are getting interest of 12% 15% in your provident fund means this is rate of interest huh? then it will be taxable means not fully partly okay so here it is exam up to 9.5% okay then after this at the end when you get the lump sum amount at the end when you get the lump sum amount it will be fully exam right now don't say it will be partly exam partly taxable because see whatever tax government wanted to levy they have levied at the time of depositing in the provident fund for example interest imagine every year you were getting interest of 10% every year you were getting interest of 10% on provident fund so out of 10% you are exempted only 9.5 so balance 0.5% has already been taxed so obviously at the end when you receive the lump sum amount it cannot be taxed again it will amount to double tax because see many students have told me sir even this should become partly partly why partly partly see whatever partly taxable government wanted to do they already done it during the service see this is happening during the service so that's what i said interest if it was 10% so 9.5 was exam balance 0.5% was taxable and that was taxable on yearly basis every year provident fund was credited with interest 
and on year to year you might have paid the tax now if that accumulated amount you get together at the time of retirement you will not have to pay the tax again so in short lump sum amount will become fully exempt wait lump sum amount will become fully exempt under section 10 12 for spf it was 10 11 and for rpf it is 10 12 it's fully exempt okay now see with example let me explain how to solve this thing okay now wait see this is just a random sum i have just taken any amount of my choice okay this is not a particular question this is random figures so let's assume in the question they have given employers contribution first wait 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 what will you do with employees contribution Ignore. don't write only see have i written anywhere no. because my my knows it is there already in the basic salary because employees contribution is cut from basic only and this basic salary we have already written at gross figure so employees contribution you, you are not able to see so you don't have to write only then what will you do with employers contribution this you will record separately because this is a separate thing which employer is contributing for you over and above your salary so first i will write in the inner column see whenever it is exam you have to first write it in the inner column and then what you will do tell me less less exam and subtract exam see here again no section still if you want to say section you can say 10 12 but we have reserved the section for the lump sum amount only okay so just write exam up to 12% of basic salary dearness allowance and turnover commission so accordingly look this way you will present exam up to 12% 12% is fixed now this 3 lakhs i am assuming it is the basic salary this you will be able to find from the question every question there will be basic salary so record the basic salary and what is this dearness salary and what is this turnover commission and i have assumed in my question there is no turnover commission and this is basic this is da so 12% of that 48000 so minus this balance in the outer column so nothing new i am just explaining how to solve in this sum okay then what will you do with interest interest assume it is given 10% so it is exam up to 9.5% so calculate so how much it comes to so see most of the students are telling me 1000 how much so see year one common mistake is what you look students will take 9.5% of this which is absolutely wrong tell me why this is wrong see 9.5% is the rate of interest see rate of interest you can apply on the fund balance but is this provident fund balance see if i know how much money is there in my provident fund the whole fund balance then i can understand the fund balance 9.5% is the amount as per 9.5 but this is not the fund balance 20000 itself is interest but this is at the rate of 10% so if at the rate of 10% interest comes to 20000 so what will be at the rate of 9.5% cross multiply see now you can find but did you understand what mistake is possible yes. students what they will do they will directly calculate 9.5 on this and you know why it is wrong because you are calculating interest on interest this 20000 itself is interest and on interest you are calculating again interest so that is wrong rate of interest we apply on the fund balance and we don't know the fund balance in the question and you will never know in the question they will always give you the interest figure but the given interest figure will be some different rate so we can use cross multiplication that if 10% rate gives me interest of 20000 
So what will be the interest at the rate of nine point five percent? So that comes to almost twenty thousand multiply by nine point five divided by ten. How much? Nineteen thousand. Okay. See, what is the technique to remember this thing? You know, nine point five cross multiply. Rhyme it. Nine point five cross multiply. Nine point five cross multiply. See, actually there is no need to buy it. If you understood the concept, you can do. But sometimes in exam you make silly mistakes, and silly mistake is what you will calculate twenty thousand nine point five percent. So it's better you remember only like this nine point five cross multiply. It it's rhyming nine point five cross multiply, and then. how to present this thing this is very simple if lump sum amount is given in the question it is fully exam you will put directly dash in the outer column because it is fully exam okay so rpf is also done here mainly you have to remember these two formulas employer's contribution 12% of basic salary plus dns allowance plus turnover commission and the logic of 12% is every company in real life what they do depending upon your salary certain Percentage they contribute, but that certain percentage can be fifteen, fourteen, five, six, ten, anything. But law says up to twelve percent. If you are contributing, we are we will exempt it. But if it is above that, it will be taxable. Tell me, what if employer contributes only six percent of your salary? Then it will be fully exempt. Up to twelve percent means that is the limit. Anything below that will become fully exempt. so this is rpf now one more point look here this lump sum amount when you receive from rpf what did i say it is fully exam under section 10 12 but there is a condition employee should have rendered minimum 5 years service only if employee has rendered minimum 5 years service then only the lump sum amount will be fully exam what is the logic of this means law is expecting you serve for minimum 5 years if you are rendered service of minimum 5 years then whatever lump sum amount you get on retirement or death it will be completely exempt provided you are work for minimum 5 years so tell me what if an employee is retired in 3 years only he worked for 3 years after completing 3 years he retired Now see, once you retire, you can rightfully say, "Give my provident fund money." You can go to your boss and say, "I am retiring. I don't want to work here. It's my choice." See, no one can force you to work. If you want to leave the job, you can leave. But then, after three years, you can tell your boss that whatever provident fund money is gathered during this three years period, give my money. So, boss will not say no, but Income Tax Act will make it taxable. why why income tax act expects that you should work for minimum 5 years because see if employee leaves the job before 5 years so he will have to he will be given this amount and to give this lump sum amount all the investments will be broken and as you know provident fund money in rpf is invested as per government directions and you know what law feels wherever the money is invested at least it should remain invested for 5 years and if you break the investment little early you know investment will not fetch good returns basic idea is what you know the fund money should remain intact for at least 5 years but if employee says no i want to leave the job in 2 years only so company cannot say him no company will have to say okay you want to leave but since he is leaving the provident fund money will be broken means the money wherever it is invested that investment will break and just for giving the money to that retiring employee who is retiring in 2 years the investment is broken so government doesn't like it that's why government is indirectly punishing you basically government is trying to say at least work for 5 years because if you work for 5 years your fund money will remain intact it is invested in some good areas 
ओके एंड सी प्रोविडेंट फंड मनी स्पेशली इन आरपीएफ इट इज इन्वेस्टेड एज पर गवर्नमेंट प्लानिंग सो गवर्नमेंट वॉन्ट्स दैट वेर एवर द मनी इज इन्वेस्टेड एज पर अवर प्लानिंग इट शुड रिमेन इंटैक्ट इट शुड नॉट बी ब्रोकन बट नाउ इफ एम्प्लॉय सेज आई वॉन्ट टू लीव द जॉब सो वी विल हैव टू ब्रेक द इन्वेस्टमेंट दैट गवर्नमेंट डजन लाइक दैट्स वाय लॉ इज पनिशिंग यू दैट इफ यू रिटायर बिफोर फाइव इयर्स नो वन कैन स्टॉप यू you will get your money also but it will not be exempt but then you know what will happen it will not be exempt means what no if you leave the job after 3 years say for example 3 years then you know what will happen during 3 years whatever exemption you enjoyed that exemption will be withdrawn what did i say i am assuming employee is left after 3 years me 3 years he worked after 3 years he said boss tata bye bye boss i am going okay so now he is going so government is feeling bad because after 3 years only you are leaving so what government will do government will say okay you leave but in your 3 year service every year you got firstly do you understand this exemption you get on year to year basis yes. because see this interest is deposited in your account on yearly basis yes. employer also contribute on yearly basis so in your 3 year service this should have happened 3 times mm. so in 3 years whatever exemption you enjoyed that exemption will be withdrawn what do you mean by withdraw the exemption what was exempted will be taxed so tell me in 3 years what exemption you enjoyed 48000 into 3 calculate 48000 into 3 see basically imagine government is angry and government is saying what you know we gave you exemption of 48000 in first year second year third year now you are leaving we will withdraw the exemption withdraw means they are snatching back first they generously give the exemption okay 48000 exam exam this way they gave us exemption for 3 years now this 3 years total we will be withdrawn back so what is the total of 3 years 48000 into 3 144000 and 19000 into 3 years Fifty, fifty-seven thousand. So all this amount will become taxable in the fourth year. Fourth year when this statement is prepared. See, this statement is prepared every year. So first three years your statement looked like this. Then in fourth year what will happen? How will you prepare statement of fourth year? See, it will be like this. Fourth year. in this statement of fourth year that lump sum amount in the outer column what will come that 48000 into 3 19000 into 3 that whole amount will come here and when it comes in the outer column whatever how much you got 2 lakhs 1000 it will become taxable I mean this way government is retaliating okay government is taking the revenge government said just because it was a recognized provident fund for 3 years we gave you exemption 48000 48000 48 see why i am taking 3 because in my example i am assuming 3 years. years he worked then he retired what if i say he worked only for 2 years then he retired so he enjoyed exemption for 2 years so whatever 2 years exemption you got in respect of employer contribution and interest that exemption will be reversed reverse means it was deducted now it will be added in your income this is called exemption is withdrawn okay but see right now you know what you did 48000 you multiplied by 3 every year amount will not be same here i assume that all 3 years you got exemption of 48000 only but do you think every year it was 48 48 48 only see every year salary might differ 
And if your salary differs, this 12% amount will change. Imagine first year salary was less, second year your salary was more. So every year if the figures change, then this 48,000 will not be 48,000. In real life what we have to do, we have to literally go back in the flashback. Flashback of past 3 years and we have to see in the past 3 year statement, what was the exemption for? Employer contribution and what was the exemption for interest? Even interest would have been different every year. See, this year I got interest of 20,000. Does it mean last year also it was 20? Last year I might have got little less interest. Okay. So, in short, just to explain, I said just multiply by 3. But actually, directly multiplying by 3 is a wrong technique. We have to literally open up the statement of past 3 years and in each year we have to see what was this amount and what was this amount this way of all 3 years you have to add up and then this was earlier minus now it will be added and this is technically called exemption is withdrawn ok but this will happen when if you leave the job before 5 years tell me if you have worked exactly for 5 years then your exemption will remain alive. Alive means what was exempted will remain exempt. And at the end whatever you get it will be tax free. Okay. Tell me how will you express this thing in a proper language. Because in exam you have to write the paper in English. Okay. So listen carefully how I am saying. Huh? How I'm saying. Lump sum amount received from RPF is exempt under section 10, 12, provided employee has rendered service of minimum 5 years. If he renders a service for a period of less than 5 years, then the exemption allowed in respect of employer's contribution and interest in past shall be withdrawn. I repeat, if the employee renders a service for a period of Less than three five years. Repeat. If the employee renders a service for a period of less than five years, then exemption allowed in respect of employer's contribution and interest in past shall be withdrawn. Repeat. Exemption allowed in respect of employer's contribution and interest shall be withdrawn. And do you agree, exemption was allowed only for these two items. Huh. See, employee's contribution becomes taxable as a part of basic only. You are given exemption for employer's contribution interest. That is why my language was, if the employee retires for a less, within a period of less than 5 years, then exemption allowed in respect of employer's contribution and interest in past shall be withdrawn. Shall be withdrawn means what was deducted in past it will be added. And in my example it will added in the fourth year. Because three years are gone. Now in fourth year when you are talking about leaving the job, leaving the job, leaving the job. So in fourth year action will be taken of taxing the exemption claimed earlier. Okay. But see there are certain exceptions for this. Sometimes even if you leave the job before 5 years, government will not retaliate. Government will not get angry. You know when, if employee has to retire due to uncontrollable reason. What do you mean by uncontrollable reason? Maybe employee has become completely handicapped. He has suffered from some severe accident. Now doctors has said you cannot go for a job now. So because of such serious and genuine reason he has to leave the job then government will not punish. Okay. And sometimes employee has died only. See law is expecting you to work for minimum 5 years. Minimum 5 years. But you should be alive. Yes. So if death takes place or some serious accident takes place or whatever. Due to some reason it is not possible for you to continue the job. See, what should be the exact reason, law doesn't say. 
law says if the reason is not controllable it is unavoidable it is so genuine that you cannot continue the job then if you have to leave before 5 years it's okay it's okay means what this exemption will not be withdrawn and whatever lump sum amount you get it will be tax free so in my example after 3 years when he retired in the fourth year lump sum amount in the statement you would write dash fully exempt because his retirement is due to genuine reason okay this is first exception if employee retires due to uncontrollable reason then if employer's business is discontinued means the company where you were working the company is shut down so employee even if he wants to work he cannot work because the company itself is shut down so this is the second exception third exception if employee retires in say 2 3 years and if he says i don't want my provident fund money transfer it to my new boss means imagine employee is changing the job he was working in wipro now he has taken a new job in infosys just an example till now he was working in wipro he worked in wipro for 3 years now he is changing the job he wants to job join the job in infosys so you know employee will tell wipro that whatever provident fund got accumulated in my 3 year service i don't want to encash it i don't want to encash it transfer it to infosys so if you give such instruction then also government will not get angry why because your fund money remains invested see if you say i want my provident fund to give me if you want to encash then the provident fund investment will be disturbed but if you are saying politely that i don't want my provident fund money i am leaving your job i hate your company i don't want to work here but it's okay don't give me my provident fund transfer it to my new company so if you get your fund transfer to the new job that means you are not encashing then also exemption will be allowed but apart from this three exception if you leave before 5 years then exemption is withdrawn you heard there were three exceptions yes first employee leaving the job due to uncontrollable reason or ill health in the law they also written ill health or any uncontrollable reason means health reasons or any uncontrollable second employer's business is discontinued employer's business is discontinued third is employee has left the job and joined a new employer with an instruction that his fund balance should be transferred to the new employer so in these cases exemption will be kept alive they will not withdraw the exemption okay see read this thing you know whatever i explained right now it is written here let us read together lump sum amount received from rpf is fully exempt only if the employee has rendered service of at least 5 years see at least means either 5 or more exact 5 is also covered in at least okay if employee retires before 5 years then exemption in respect of employer's contribution remember that 48000 amount yes and interest remember that 19000 amount yes in past means in 3 years in our example 3 years shall be withdrawn and when we say exemption withdrawn means exemption is reversed when you get exemption you are allowed to minus 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 but now that minus thing will become plus but it will be plus in that fourth year statement i am just continuing my example of 3 years he left okay so in fourth year it will be added in your income so that's called exemption is withdrawn okay then exception however in following cases exemption will not be withdrawn even if the service is less than 5 years. years case 1 employee has retired due to uncontrollable reasons example death etc ill health whatever uncontrollable reason then employer's business is discontinued okay then employee has retired and joined a new employer with an instruction 
that is balance in RPF should be transferred to the new employer. So, in this case also exemption will not be withdrawn. But other than these three cases, if you have left the job before five years, your exemption, what to say exemption will be withdrawn. Okay. But see, usually this will not come in the form of sum. Because if they give a sum on this, to withdraw the exemption, you should know the date of past three years. So, this is more or less a theory question. This can come as a theory question. Means to create a question on this, imagine to withdraw the exam of exemption of past, you should be knowing that in past three years, how the statements were prepared like this, see. This is just statement of one year. This way you should know in past three years how the statement was prepared. All that data should be given. Because that only we have to reverse in our current day statement. Okay. So this is less expected in the form of a question. But as a theory question, they can test you. Okay. Uh, what if the company policy says that based on, based on age factor, you will have to provide this much, uh, you, have, you have to render this much service, this much uh, particular time period yes. of service. Then in that case, it will come under case 1 or not. No, but uh, why employees retiring? That's, that's the question. Because the policy says that you will have to work for only this much age and this much time. So then, then it is a natural retirement. That's okay. See, uncontrollable reason is a broad term. It is not in your hands. It is not out of choice, out of compulsion. Uncontrollable means you cannot control it. Means you don't have a choice to continue the job. Means your boss only has, see in her example, the something like, like this is there. That boss only has put a restriction that you cannot work now. So it becomes an uncontrollable reason. Means you are removed only from the job. Let's take an example. You are removed. So, employee will say, I want to continue. But they are not keeping me only. So, it's not in my control. So, it becomes a uncontrollable reason. See, uncontrollable reason, you can put anything. I gave example, accident. It can be anything. You are removed only from the job. Now, if you are removed, then even if you want, you cannot work. So, it is not in your control. So, anything can come in uncontrollable reason, okay? Anyways, this is more of a theory question kind of thing. In this sums, when you see employees work for 20, 20 years, 25 years, in the type of sums which we are going to solve, which you have seen in the past paper, they have always given a question of employee working for 20 years, 14 years, 15 years. They have never created a sum where... He has worked for less than 5 years. Because if they want to create a sum that employee work for less than 5 years, they will have to give you the data of past years. Yes. What data? That how much exemption you got for employer contribution, how much exemption you got for interest. And that to not just for one year. Whatever number of years you worked. Because that you will have to reverse in our statement. Okay. So this is practically not tested in the form of sum. But you should have the knowledge of this. Okay. So... RPF is over, recognized provident fund. Finally, this drawing you have to remember plus that 5 years point which I said. Okay. Last provident fund is what? Unrecognized provident fund. Okay. But wait, before that, I'll do one thing. I'll take one question of RPF so that this settles completely. Then I will take a new concept of UPF. Because UPF is little tricky, little. Take out question number two. Question number two.
ready question number 2 keep this statement ready we'll discuss point by point and give the effect simultaneously Ready? First point is basic salary twenty two thousand per month, taxable or exempt? Tax taxable. But then, what did I say last lecture? Basic salary should be written net or gross. gross. But if nothing is given, we have to assume it is gross. So write as it is: twenty-two thousand into twelve. Twenty-two thousand into twelve. That comes to two lakh sixty-four thousand. So the multiplication in the bracket twenty two thousand multiplied by twelve. Then DM is DNS allowance. Tell me how to decide whether it is taxable or not. Whenever any allowance comes across, you have to search in TC hut, TC udar. If it doesn't fall in TC hut, TC udar taxable. So this is taxable eight thousand into twelve. So that comes to ninety six thousand. Then medical allowance. Medical allowance. Does it come in T C hut T C udhar? Do one thing first. You should underline the word allowance. This is allowance. Only if it is allowance, you have to search in T C hut T C udhar. Everything you cannot search in T C hut T C udhar. But this is allowance. So search in TC or TC other. It's not there, so it is taxable. But then what to do with amount spent? Ignore. Amount spent you do ignore. This is given for confusion. You know when do you need amount spent? When it is TC other. If it is TC other, we want amount spent. But this is not TC other. This is a remaining allowance, fully taxable. I forgot to check your homework today. Suddenly, I recalled. Have you done or not? Yes. Homework means that writing the notes. You have done or not? Then employees contribution to RPF. Employees contribution. What did I explain? You have to ignore it. Why? Because employees contribution comes from basic only. You know, in real life, what should happen? Employees' contribution of four thousand must have been deducted from that twenty-two thousand. An employee in his hand, he should have got only eighteen thousand. How did I get eighteen? Twenty-two minus four means in real life, an employee got the salary check. He might have got check of only eighteen thousand. Okay, because four thousand is provident fund deduction, but this twenty-two thousand is. Before deducting, it is a gross amount. Okay, and whenever problem is silent, you have to assume it is gross only. Tell me, what if this was written like this, twenty two thousand net? Then that employee's contribution we would have added and made it gross. But in any case, we would not pass a separate entry of that. It should become part of basic only. It should be shown shown inside the basic only. But here we are not doing because nothing is given means it's already gross figure. So employees contribution inside that only automatically. Then employers contribution. Employers contribution. This will be recorded separately because can you say this comes from basic salary? No, this separately comes from employers pocket. 
so it is a new income for you you will record how to record first you will write it in the inner column then less exam up to 12% of basic salary dns allowance turnover commission so see i would suggest you do like this first write employer's contribution wait i want to show the, wait just just a moment look here follow this policy look always make three dash like this and then fill in the blanks first write employer's contribution to rpf wait you have to also notice it is spf or rpf, RPF. what if this was spf fully yeah. exam then i would have put directly dash in the outer column you forgot i had explained spf first today see this spf is fully exam isn't it but in this question it is not spf it is rpf So twelve percent of basic plus DA plus turnover commission. Have you shown like this? Basic two lakh sixty four thousand. DNS allowance is ninety six thousand. Turnover question commission is not there in the question. then what about interest what do, you should remember 9.5 cross multiply 9.5 cross multiply so given amount is interest only but at the rate of 12 but we want interest at the rate of 9.5 so 9.5 cross multiply tell me why they have written the word credited Credited means it is deposited in your account. You will not receive now. See, provident fund money. When do you receive on retirement? And this guy is not retiring. His service is going on. And during this service, when they deposit the money, they say it is credited in your account. so this way sign of cross multiplication so 10800 into 9.5 divided by I'll, that point will come in income from other sources sorry upf that point will come in upf at that time we will discuss on that point upf so minus 8550 Balance outer column two two five zero, and once all the items are written in this statement, you have to total up. Go. 
gross salary 385050 and after this you have to always write fixed three items standard deduction entertainment allowance profession tax whether it is there or not there you have to write it as a format yes standard deduction will always be there 50000 but for entertainment allowance profession tax even if you feel it's not there in the question just write it for the sake of formality put a dash in exam to save the time you can avoid in exam but right now when you are solving this sum in the class it's better you write that's okay even if you don't write it's okay and whenever this kind of dilemma is there in exam see right now i am guiding you in exam if you have a dilemma just write it but in exam you have to also take care of the time factor always remember completion is better than perfection sometimes to make your answer perfect and all your paper remains incomplete but that is bad completion is better than perfection done this thing so question 2 we have done okay then out of the three types of provident fund look the next one is what look unrecognized provident fund see statutory provident fund it was fully exempt recognized provident fund partly partly unrecognized provident fund is fully taxable but see look look here firstly why government is taxing unrecognized provident fund because these are private sector people and they are investing the fund as per their own wish and your government is afraid and scared that staff's money is not safe and they expect that you should invest the money as per government direction but if you don't invest as per government direction your fund becomes unrecognized and the punishment of that is it is fully taxable but see look here look look at my action see non recognized provident fund when money is accumulated that time tax is not charged but at the end when you receive the lump sum amount that time it is taxable it is taxable but at what time not during the service see what what action i am doing you know i am actually drawing this thing this drawing i am trying to show with my hands okay see this is provident fund this thing okay and then this means arrows which are there on the top and this lump sum amount means like this okay so see in unrecognized provident fund when money is accumulated during the service it is not taxed but one fine day the accumulated amount will be received by the employee as a lump sum amount that time it will be taxable so see government cannot tax both the time can government do like this that in unrecognized provident fund when the money is deposited that time also you pay the tax and the same money when you receive on retirement that time also you pay the tax that will amount to double tax mm. tax has to be charged only at one event so what government has decided not to tax during the service because you know during the service every year small small amount is contributed on yearly basis so tax will not be that rigorous and government wants to rigorously tax you and that is possible if you are taxed at the end on wholesome lump sum amount do you agree this lump sum amount will be a big amount yes see yearly contribution may be say 10000 and say this is 2000 something but at the end you will get say 50 lakhs and government wants you to tax on lump sum basis wait right now don't see this drawing this is a drawing of statutory provident fund just for the sake of drawing i am showing this 
but this is statutory provident fund for upf i have made a separate drawing yes his doubt is there first it will come it's going on going on wait so what is the rule in unrecognized provident fund during the servicemen when money is deposited no tax but when the accumulated money comes in the hands of employee at the time of retirement as a lump sum figure that time it will be taxable okay now to understand more in detail i have taken one example let's assume an employee has worked for 20 years 20 years service and the company where he was working there it was unrecognized provident fund okay and assume every year from his salary 10000 was cut employee's contribution always deducted from his salary and let's assume every year 10000 was employee's contribution and the same amount was also contributed by employer okay so can you tell me in 20 years how much amount will be accumulated 10000 is per year employee contributed 10 10000 per year per year how many years of service are there 20 so tell me in 20 years total how much amount was accumulated 10000 in a year so for 20 years it will become 2 lakhs so from employee side 2 lakhs is contributed in full 20 years period similarly from employer side also 2 lakhs so 2 lakhs and 2 lakhs should be 4 lakhs but he is receiving 5 lakhs obviously because he might have received interest okay now this amount we ignore this amount and this amount will be exempt during the service but now when lump sum amount is received it will be taxable as i told you upf will be taxed but not during the service it will be taxed at the time of retirement but this 5 lakhs you have to divide into four parts wait see this see why this breakup i have done soon you will understand for the time being just understand the data then explanation will fall on place okay now in my example i am assuming he has received 5 lakhs now what is the breakup of 5 lakhs you know 2 lakhs employee contributed how did we get 2 lakhs 10000 every year every year so for 20 years it becomes 2 lakhs so 2 lakhs employee contributed 2 lakhs employer. employer contributed can you read what is this employees contribution this is employers contribution both contributed 2 lakhs and on both 2 lakh 2 lakh contribution there is interest of 50 50000 see in my example you received 5 lakhs whereas you contributed 2 plus 2 4 lakhs only so interest was 1 lakh and half of that pertains to employee savings and half of that pertains to employer savings both used to save together some amount was cut from salary of employee some amount employer was putting both were contributing equal amount so whatever interest got accumulated it equally pertains to both so what is the wording sir written over here just read interest on employees contribution and this is interest on employer's, employer's contribution you know why i have divided this 5 lakhs into four parts because the treatment of each amount will be different first check the total 5 lakhs check the total breakup of this is correctly done yes 2 lakhs 50 2 lakhs 50 total is 5 lakhs now out of this four amount this you will ignore only this will be taxable this will be taxable this will be taxable but this will not be taxable you think why bet this is not taxable but this is taxable this is taxable this is taxable so tell me why this amount is not taxed 
because where did employees contribution come from it was deducted from your basic salary and basic salary on year to year basis it was taxed on gross basis so in his 20 years service he might have prepared statement 20 times see the statement which you prepare it is prepared on year to year basis so in his 20 years service he might have prepared the statement of salary for 20 times and in every year basic salary had come at gross figure and gross means from that only this is accumulated so this has already been taxed as a part of basic salary during his 20 year service so this cannot be taxed again okay although we say that unrecognized provident film will be taxable taxable but not the employees contribution because employees contribution comes from basic and basic is independently taxed on gross basis so this should not be taxed but this will be taxable this will be taxable this will be taxable why because they were exempt earlier see what had happened to employers contribution it was fully exempt when during the service every year when employer was contributing employee was feeling happy yes my boss is accumulating something for me but on that happiness you didn't pay the tax it was always fully exempt even interest interest also gets deposited on year to year basis even that was exempt but that was during the service of 20 years but now it's time to pay tax so this will be taxable this will be taxable this will be but here one important point to be noted is read what i have done this will be taxable as income from other source only this two will come in income from salary why see this is ignored i have convinced okay and this three figures are all taxable upf has to be taxable upf last lecture i told you upf will become taxable but then why this is income from other source why this is income from salary why this is income from salary see this is income from other source because this is not thanks to my employer it is on my personal savings see an income is called salary if it is due to my employer if it is thanks to my employer but tell me how did i earn this interest this is my personal saving i got my salary cut on yearly basis and my salary was cut and kept aside it is my salary which generated interest it's my personal savings interest see once you earn salary it is your property and if your salary is cut and kept aside so it is your savings which is generating interest imagine if company would not have cut your salary if they would have given you full salary and if you would have put in bank then also you would have earned interest yes. so this interest is not thanks to my boss it is my personal interest okay personal in the sense this is employee's contribution interest an employee's contribution comes from his own salary and your own salary even if you keep it in bank the interest which you get that cannot become income from salary this way what will happen if you get a salary you invest you get dividend even that will become salary see till the time boss has given you salary it is thank you boss but after you earn the salary wherever you invest it is a personal income there boss has not done anything great for you it is your own income income from other sources so this interest is purely on your own savings but what is this interest this is thanks to employer for this interest you will feel like thanking your employer why you feel thankful or not for this you will feel thankful or not because you will say it, you will tell your boss thank you boss every year you used to contribute 10000 for me and because you contributed on that interest is also come thank you boss so i will thank my boss for this 2 lakhs also 
and fifty thousand also. And for the amount for which you feel like thankful to boss, it becomes your income from salary. It is thanks to your boss. That's why income from salary. We say it comes out of employer-employee relation. Okay, but this has not come from my boss. This is my personal saving. Which even if it was not cut from the salary, even if I would have put somewhere in the bank, I would have independently earned the interest. Okay, so that is why this breakup is done. So see, conclusion is what you know. Look, in unrecognized provident fund, when money is accumulated, it's fully exam. But at the end, when you get the lump sum amount, thak 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 thak, four parts. What is this thak 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 thak? Employees contribution ignore interest income from other sources. Employers contribution interest income from salary. I am drawing the chart. Thak 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 means employees contribution interest on that. Employers contribution interest on that. What is the effect? Employees contribution ignore because that is accumulated from your basic salary. Your basic salary has already been taxed. And interest on that. Is your personal income? It is not thanks to your boss. So it is income from other source. It will be taxable, but it will not be recorded in salary statement. As you know, for five words of income, we prepare five separate statement. Yes. So this interest will be recorded in income from other source statement. Okay. Eventually, all the incomes are added. Remember, first lecture I told you. At the end, all the incomes, whether it is salary, income from house property, income from business, capital gains, income from other sources, eventually everything is added. But during the process of computation, every income should be positioned at a proper place. So this will be positioned in income from other sources, and these two figures will go to income from salary. Okay. See here, you know why did I take the amount so that you can feel properly. Without amount, I would have explained. You know, it becomes little vague. So finally, UPF is also over. Now see, his doubt was yeah. You you asked the doubt first. Yes, good question. Look here, her doubt is what you know, sir. This four amounts will be given to us, or we will have to find out. they will not give this four amount very clearly some data they will provide but not full data so you will have to use your brains to find out the four amounts first and for that i am taking a question immediately right now one question i will take there you will have to intelligently think how to determine this four amounts and once this four amounts are calculated then the work is very simple what to do for this you will say go to hell this you will say go to ifos and for these two amounts come 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 and sit in the statement of salary these two amounts you will have to welcome because this will come in income from salary but to find out this four amount also sometimes they play a trick in the question so you should be able to find out we'll take a question on that right now but before that wait he had a doubt his doubt was what do you know See right now, what did I say? This interest I had given two types of interest. First was interest on employees, and other was on employer. For employees' interest, what did I say? It's income from other source. Okay, so same thing should be done here also. See this. See, I am suddenly going to the drawing of RPF. Okay, because he had a doubt at the time of RPF. So see, tell me this twenty thousand interest on RPF. What we do? Exam up to nine point five percent. So actually speaking, even this one thousand part of it should be taxable under income from other source, and part of it should be taxable in income from salary. Because see, whatever interest gets deposited in your account. it is not purely due to employers contribution employee is also contributing since both are contributing so interest is thanks to employees and employers both contribution but since like in this question we didn't have the data 
that how much of this interest of 20000 pertains to employee how much of that pertains to employer since that data is not given we put everything in salary but in real life technically speaking even this should be apportioned the portion which pertains to employer should come here employer here and the portion which pertains to employee it should go to income from other source technically but till now in any questions of icai they have not put this point i had to touch this point because he had a query he had a query that sir actually he had a query while we were solving this question see this see here interest was there 10800 so he had a question that time only sir in this interest some interest is because of employees own contribution it's correct see 10800 is the total interest deposited in my account but in my provident fund account it is not that only employer is putting money employees also putting but since the breakup is usually not given in the question we don't bother and you know in real life doesn't make much difference because in real life the interest which you get on provident fund it is below 9.5 only this 12% was unrealistic no company will have a provident fund where you will fetch interest of 12 12% be practical in reality you will also work in some company some day in your provident fund also in reality you will hardly get 8 9% interest it is always below 9.5 see in our question you know deliberately the percent is a big 12 to test your knowledge tell me if it is 12 then then only 9.5 exam to test your knowledge purposely big big rates are given but let's be practical in practical life the rate is always 8 9% which anyways become exam so there is no bothersome to divide this into how much is employees and how much is employer see the main discussion i am doing is what you know even this interest we should have split into little bit income from other so little bit income from salary but don't do that that data and that information will never be given in the question so you don't think much in that lines i am discussing because someone had a doubt okay but yes when it comes to upf in upf you have to do this interest bifurcation because this is a lump sum amount it can be lakhs crores also sometimes an employee might get 50 lakhs from provident fund so it is such a big amount okay so in short moral is this interest bifurcation should have happened in rpf also but forget it anyways in rpf your interest is exam up to 9.5 and up till 9.5 only you get in real life okay now see we will practice this thing with the help of one question okay see my plan was what you know spf i taught i didn't take any sum you don't need any sum because spf everything is fully exam rpf i taught i immediately took a sum now i taught upf i will immediately take a sum but before that sum please listen to one very good thing please three provident fund see the way i am summarizing okay SPF, RPF, UPF. In SPF, when money is accumulated, that time also exam, and when you receive, that time also exam. In RPF, when money is accumulated, partly exam, partly taxable, but when you receive, it's fully exam, provided five years service. In UPF, when money is accumulated, that time it's exam, but when you receive, it is taxable. Thak 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 thak. summary in short yes okay because see when a particular theory is going on it takes little time but we have to sum up so you will feel it, it is only this much so if i also ask you a question of provident you should answer this way only in spf see when i am doing this thing means i am drawing this upper arrows okay okay so in spf repeat in spf when money is accumulated that time also exam and when you receive lump sum amount that time also exam but in rpf when money is accumulated partly exam partly taxable but when you receive at the end lump sum fully exam provided minimum service of 5 years and here it is exam under section 
SPF was 10, 11, this is 10, 12, 11 and 12. But in UPF, when money is accumulated, that time exam, but at the time of retirement, when you receive the lump sum amount, it will be taxable. How? Thak, 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 thak. Four parts. Employee's contribution, ignore. Interest, income from other sources. Employer's contribution, interest on that, income from salary. So for this, I will take a question. Question number three it is. Take out question three. Keep the statement ready. Ready with the statement? Now see one common mistake, you know what will happen here, look. If you try to rush up, what mistake you will do? 12,000 per one basic salary, multiply by 12, 1,44,000, wrong. Read. Read this carefully. Whenever the question is on retirement, be careful. Don't directly multiply everything by 12 months. See, normally anything given per month be multiplied by 12 months because the service is going on throughout the year. But notice in the question, see he has retired. And that to when? In our previous year. Why I am saying previous year? Income is always calculated for the previous year and what is our previous year 23 24 and he has retired in our previous year only So he didn't work only for 12 months How will he get salary for 12 months? So see make a point whenever the question is on retirement look you should draw a timeline Like this see what I'm doing. I'll show you directly which is drawn here. Wait like this our year is 1st april 23 to 31st march 24 and when did he retire 30th november so tell me he will get salary only for this period so tell me from april to november how many months are there eight months so you should be very careful whenever the question is on retirement it's just a matter of silly mistake I'm saying because usually you have the habit of multiplying by 12. Yes. But be careful in such questions. Draw this thing. Make it a rule that whenever the question is on retirement, you will always draw a timeline. Even if you don't feel like drawing, but still you draw. Because if you have that habit, you will avoid the silly mistake. And right here it is 8 months. After retirement you don't get salary. Correct? So only for 8 months. Everything per month only for 8 months. So... Okay, read the first line properly. Mr. X retired on 30th November 23 after completing a service of 26 years. Okay. From the following details, calculate taxable salary. So start one by one. First is basic salary, 12,000 into 8. So that comes to 96,000. Okay. 
96,000 basic salary. Then next point is dearness allowance, 3000 per month. Even this will multiply by 8 months. So, 3000 into 8, 24000. I am not showing the multiplication in the bracket, but you show, huh? Okay, then wait. Now look at this. Look, look. Tell me the effect of all these four points together. You know, actually, this four points you should be able to. Visualize in the form of drawing. Tell me in my drawing how this four point will appear. Look, our drawing was like this. Employee contribution, look. Then, employer contribution, correct. Then, interest. So, three arrows on the top, then one arrow at the bottom. And that is a lump sum amount. And these four things are given in the question. So, do one thing, don't do anything in fair, do rough work and just draw a rough drawing of this kind of drawing. Do it roughly. And then tell me the effect of all these four items. Means I want you to convert these four points in the form of a drawing. But see, when you are drawing, keep a margin for this. Huh? This will take little space. This lump sum amount. See, in exam, it's not necessary to draw a big drawing. But since we have understood right now with the help of a drawing, it's better for your reference. You should have this kind of drawing in your notebook. Same thing, but amounts you don't put this one. Amounts you put as per our question. See, my drawing is also ready. Is it like this, correct? Employees contribution 2000 per month. See in the question it is given. Employees contribution 2000 per month. Employers contribution 3000 per month. 2000, 3000. Interest. 9000. See what do you mean by this credited? Credited means in your account it is deposited. See he retired on 30th November, 
But till 30th November, the money was being accumulated only. On 30th November, he encashed everything from the fund. Okay, now the challenge is what? How to divide this 6 lakhs into 4 parts? What are the 4 parts? Employees contribution, then interest on that. Employers contribution, interest on that. You should be able to find out on your own. Huh? Correct, correct, correct. <laughs> See what was the most important information for us, you know, look this. Lump sum amount of 6 lakhs has got how much interest? Did you read this or not? 1 lakh 50 thousand is interest. So see, your first bifurcation will be like this. Interest is 1 lakh 50. So what is the balance? 4 lakh 50. This I will name it as contribution. Just the word contribution. Now, how much is employee? How much is employer? Even in interest, how much is employee? How much is employer? But the main breakup, did you see how I done? From 6 lakhs, they have given interest is 1 lakh 50. So, remaining 4 lakh 50 becomes a contribution of both employee, employer, both. And then you have to bifurcate how much is employee's contribution, how much is employer. Even in interest, you have to do bifurcation. But in what ratio? Yes, this ratio. Look, look, look at this. See, my iPad will get damaged. 2000, 3000 will determine the ratio that employee and employer has been contributing in the ratio 2 is to 3. This was most important to be noticed. If employee contributes 2000, employer is contributing 3000. So the ratio will be 2 is to 3. So now the thing is very clear. See how I have done. You can continue like this. The way I have done. Did you understand this 1 lakh 50 thousand was given in the question? And this 4 lakh 50 becomes a balance bigger. And then in 2 is to 3 ratio, Then, then write below all amounts the effect of that. Employees contribution 1 lakh 80, ignore. And employers contribution, it will be income from salary. Even interest on employers contribution, it will be income from salary.
done okay now tell me the effect of all see you have to give the effect of every amount over here look start from the top what is the effect of this ignore, ignore. see you have to talk about all point because see in the question they had given 2000 3000 9000 6 six lakhs so effect of all we have to give so regarding this it will be ignored so you can write here in the working only you can write this will be ignored earnest allowance there is one point to be explained see last lecture what did i say what is earnest allowance it is an allowance given to face inflation okay because the inflation is torture because in inflation everything becomes costly so you have to spend a lot and your income is a little bit so it's very difficult to face inflation and to face inflation companies give you dearness allowance okay now dearness allowance can be of two types sometimes it is called in terms sometimes it is called not in terms now what is the difference between in terms not in terms that i want to explain okay and sometimes they write like this look dns allowance forming part of salary not forming part of salary so what is the meaning of this that is my plan to explain right now like see for example see this question see here can you see what is written read not forming part of salary not forming part of salary so if i don't explain the meaning of this you will feel tortured every time it comes in the question it will irritate you so it's better to know what is the meaning of forming part of salary not forming part of salary it is also sometimes called as in terms not in terms so now look here look imagine i am your boss and if i tell you see you will get a dearness allowance but it will not fluctuate as per inflation it will increase as per my terms although dearness allowance is meant for inflation but i am your boss i am telling you don't talk about inflation in the market i will not see inflation if i want to increase your da i will increase as per my wish means if your dearness allowance doesn't move as per inflation it goes as per the terms and condition of the boss it is called in terms that means such da will remain constant irrespective of the inflation constant means see this arrow indicates what you know this dearness allowance will remain constant always yes it will increase but if i want to increase i am your boss my terms my terms terms okay but if i don't want to increase i will not increase i can say you are not doing the job properly only i will not increase your da it will remain this much only you are given 5000 per month you will get 5000 i don't want to increase you will say but sir inflation to help with inflation this da doesn't go as per inflation it will go as per my terms so this is called da in terms and why it is called forming part of salary you know it is becoming a part of basic salary only the nature of basic salary same nature becomes of da what is the nature of basic salary it remains constant it will increase only when there is a promotion or if boss wants to increase looking at your performance he will increase your basic salary so dearness allowance will also have the same nature that's why it's called forming part of salary and your salary means your basic salary so see if boss tells you your da is a part of basic salary only means like basic like da so how is basic it's always constant it increases if you perform better or whenever there is promotion but let's assume there is no promotion and no better performance so basic salary is constant da also remains constant so that is called da in terms but if i tell you let's see your basic salary will be constant but don't worry about da right now i am giving you 5000 it can become 10000 also it can become 12000 also if there is inflation but if the prices go down i will reduce your da also means your da will fluctuate according to inflation see this i am not dancing i am just showing 
the waves in the sense sometimes it will drop it will increase it will drop it will move according to inflation means it will not go as per my terms and my wish not in terms see what i have written here not in terms means it will not go as per terms see terms means the rules of the boss so if da doesn't move as per boss systems and condition it moves according to the market inflation then it is called it is not as per terms it goes as per inflation so i hope you understand why this drawing this flat arrow means here dearness salams will remain constant whether there is inflation or something which is fixed is made up of something which is fixed even in terms as a nature of fixed item yes. see this is hyperactive which one that da because it will fluctuate according to inflation and government doesn't want to make a formula with an item of da which keeps fluctuating formula means something which should remain fixed and something which is fixed should be made up of something which is fixed and this is fixed in nature but this is fixed or fluctuating fluctuating but see i again repeat don't think this da remains constant it will never change it will change but as per the terms of the boss say for example after 5 tens or 8 tens years of service your performance was so good i have promoted you in the uh, company so once you get promotion your everything will increase basic da so in short this da will increase but not according to inflation it will increase according to my terms in short see both the ds are taxable but in the formula this is taken this is not taken see there is one good slogan here read in terms in formula not in terms not in formula it's not tuning in terms in formula not in terms not in formula so as soon as you see in the question not in terms not in formula in terms in formula but see we have solved question till now see in this question da nothing was given so we assumed in terms so see if you notice in question number 2 which we solved right now see this see question number 2 which we solved see this formula read the 12% formula which 12% this one 12% of basic plus da plus turnover commission so now since you know it should be which type of da in terms but our problem was silent it simply mentioned da so we assumed it in terms whenever problem is silent make positive assumption this is very important statement very helpful huh? whenever problem is silent make positive assumption nothing is given assume in terms and in terms in formula that's why see i took it in the formula see i am talking about which formula there are many formulas which will come two formulas which have come till now is hra and this one till now we have come across two formulas where there was da this is one your da was there and in yesterday's lecture wait where that has gone in yesterday's lecture we had done hra there also we had talked about dns allows so now make it a rule in the whole chapter whenever in the formula if i say da so it is understood which da in terms, in terms. that's why the slogan says in terms in formula not in terms not in formula but see not in terms not in formula you have to write it in the main statement for example see in this question in this question if dearness allows they would have written not in terms you know many students what they do not in terms ignore it don't ignore in the main statement see in the main statement entry will be passed 
you didn't listen what did i say see whether you receive da like this or like this you are receiving so it is your income so it will be taxable as an item of income you have to record in the statement it is just when you are using the formula that time you use that slogan in terms in formula not in terms not in work because in formula we take selected things only we take basic salary da that also in terms and turnover commission we don't take everything in the formula so tell me if this da was not in terms should i write it in the main statement yes, yes obviously in the main statement whether it is in terms not in terms write it in the statement write it in the statement but in this formula no don't take da if it is not in terms if it is in terms take it although in this question the problem was silent so we had to assume it is in terms okay so these are the two types of da i'll do one thing for both i will write this is also taxable both are taxable in nature taxable means both you have to write in the main statement but this is in terms it will come in formula also this is not in terms not in formula but both are taxable okay now see what is the status of our chapter income from salary where have we reached see this is a checklist whenever you finish anything you have to check what is the status now so tell me basic salary is done okay i'll just highlight it this is finished okay allowance is also done okay provident fund also finally done three types of provident fund spf rpf upf okay now next theory comes is gratuity now first i will explain the meaning of gratuity then whether it is taxable or exempt first tell me what is the meaning of gratuity yes it is like a gift which employer gives at the time of retirement because you know when employee retires say after 25 years you know what boss feels he feels grateful he feels like saying you thank you thank you for what you worked under me for 25 years your whole life you devoted to this company i am thankful to you and when we feel thankful in english we say i am feeling grateful and from the word grateful comes gratitude and how do you express your gratitude either by saying thank you or by giving money boss is giving money see boss could have said like this also thank you thank you thank you for your service this is also expressing your gratitude yes. see expressing gratitude means what you should feel thankful for someone and from the word gratitude the word gratuity has come okay but see if boss simply says thank you thank you for your service okay nice it was nice being with you for so many years okay bye then there is no gratuity but if boss says take this 20 lakhs from my side thank you for your services then it becomes a gratuity means basically boss is expressing his gratitude by giving you money and such money becomes gratuity but this happens when at the time of retirement and also death also for example if employee dies so employer will boss will talk to his family members he will go to his family members saying your husband was so nice i am very sad that he is no more now but he had worked under me for so many years i am thankful for his services so whenever you feel thank you we say we are feeling grateful or we say we are expressing our gratitude and for that expression if we give money it is gratuity if we simply say thank you then no gratuity <laughs> gratuity comes when you say thank you and give money also then it is called gratuity okay see it's kind of give but technically it is not gift see gift is something which you get free is this free or for your services it's for your services boss is 
giving you gratuity in consideration of what your services because you work for so many years so in consideration of that i feel like giving gift okay so kind of gift we say but technically it is not a gift gift is what which you get totally free okay so anyways casually we can say it is kind of a gift which employer gives at the time of retirement but it is not for free you had worked for so many years you have put your heart and soul in a company for that you are given amount so that is gratuity okay but see the main point is what taxable or exempt okay so one thing is for sure gratuity is given when either on retirement or death okay and it is the the purpose of giving it is what you know boss wants to express his gratitude that he is thankful for you and he wants to give you money but now it is taxable or exempt so see whenever government feels that this amount should be given to employee this is a genuine amount given to employee government will exempt it so what do you think what should be the opinion of the government that should bosses give gratuity to employee yes, yes. because employees put their heart and soul they work for so many years in a company bosses should give gratuity and if they give government is also convinced yes you should be given gratuity and we will also exempt it because government is also in favor of this thing see when government will tax you know when government feels you are getting something extra only huh? it was not needed then government says taxable but here will government say this is something extra only this was not needed this is needed every employee should be rewarded this way at the time of his retirement because he has given his life to a company okay so since government is convinced with giving of gratuity government has exempted it under section 10 in bracket also 10 Look, ten, 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 ten. See this. Gratuity is exempt under section ten, ten. But the theory doesn't get over here. It is exempt, but how much? That depends upon whether you are government employee or a poga employee. What is poga employee? I will tell you. Or other employee. There are three types of employee. government employee poga employee other employee depending upon the type of the employee we have to decide okay now you can start guessing if a government employee gets gratuity fully exam see you might be wondering this is mere partiality just because government is making income tax rules they are trying to do favor for government it's not like that see government employees do not get abnormal amount of gratuity they get reasonable amount only so that's why government is not putting limit in private sector your boss might be filthy rich he might literally give you crores then government says your boss is rich he has given crores of amount to you but we will exempt up to a limit in short in private sector why government has to put limit because private sector employers might be so rich and so generous that they might give you any amount but government says we will not exempt fully it will be up to a limit but in government job government knows they don't give so much they give it in limit only that is why it is fully exempt understand the fundamental okay so conclusion is what if a government employee as receive gratuity you should understand that government employee will never get abnormal amounts they will get reasonable amount only so government also says okay it's fully exempt okay but here it will not be fully exempt because these two are private sector employees okay and in private sector you never know your boss might give huge amounts of gratuity and just because it is exempt doesn't mean it will be a fully exempt then then there is a limit okay but see for both the types of employee the limit is different but then first i will explain what is poga employee and what is other employee so see 
पोगा मीन्स पेमेंट ऑफ ग्रेचुटी एक्ट पेमेंट ऑफ ग्रेचुटी एक्ट 1972 means for gratuity there is an act and you know why 1972 this act was made because see there are many bosses who are ungrateful you know imagine an employee has worked for 25 years now he is leaving no send off no farewell what boss is saying you know you are working with me for 25 years now we are old get lost Get lost. An employee is saying, "Sir, what about gratuity? Why? Why gratuity? When you are working, you are getting salary. Now you get lost. I mean, they don't feel grateful only. See, if someone has done something for you, you should have the feeling of thank you. For example, I am teaching you a lot, and if you say so, big deal. We are giving you fees. Get lost. <laughs> How bad it sounds. See, even a student feels thanks, sir. Whenever result comes, students come to me, sir. Thank you, you taught us. Although I charge the fees, but still a student has got some attachment that because of sir, I could clear the exam in first attempt. Blah blah blah. Don't you feel like saying thank you? Yes. But some people are not like that. Means even some bosses, you know how they are. Even if employees work for so many years, their mentality is what? What great you have done. If you have worked under me, I have also given you salary. now you are old get lost means they don't feel the gratitude so for such useless bosses government had made a law in 1972 and this law forces the boss to pay gratuity because boss might be so you know rude and harsh he is not having that feeling of thank you only but what law says to help with your feel to compulsorily give gratuity so this kind of law had come in 1972 and that is called payment of gratuity act 1972 and this act was needed because you know poor employees many poor employees they were working under selfish bosses very rude and you know arrogant bosses the bosses were such that on retirement they are not giving anything See, in general, also we expect some farewell, send off party, etc. When you are leaving the job, at least you expect some amount. But there are some ungrateful bosses who never gave gratuity. That's why in 1972 there came a law, and as per law, now it is compulsory. Actually speaking, gratuity is something which you should feel to give from your heart. That I am so thankful for your service. Take this amount. You should naturally feel like giving. but then natural feeling many people do not have so that's why law had to make it compulsory and that is by way of payment of gratuity act 1972 but see this act doesn't apply to all companies means the law doesn't compel and force every boss because see if imagine a boss like me i am also i am myself am a small boss if law forces me shirish vyas you are having two three employees you will have to compulsorily give gratuity then it is unfair to me also no see if a big company doesn't give gratuity it feels bad but sometimes the boss himself is having a small business and you cannot force a boss having a small business that you give gratuity boss will say i could hardly manage to give my staff salary now you are saying give gratuity sorry i cannot afford so sometimes boss capacity is boss's capacity is not there that's why law is not applicable to all companies so see the chart now look look firstly see the law of payment what was the full form payment of gratuity act 1972 see here in some companies it has made gratuity payment compulsory but in other companies it is not compulsory so that's what i was convincing can law make everyone compulsory no why it why it will be unfair because sometimes the company itself is a poor state that it can hardly manage to give salary and on the top of that if law is forcing you give gratuity also it would not be fair 
that's why law is not forcing every company but there are certain companies read what are in some companies where gratuity payment is compulsory and if the company doesn't give you gratuity you can file a case and you have the backing of payment of gratuity act 1972 means i am talking about if you are working in this some companies but there are many other companies where the law doesn't apply which law which law payment of gratuity act 1972 that act doesn't apply and act doesn't apply means in these companies if you are working it is not necessary you will get gratuity if you are getting it's your luck if you are not getting you cannot file a case okay now the main point is if you work in such companies then you are called you are a poga employee why poga because you are working in a company where payment of gratuity act is applicable that is why you are a poga employee now you know what question should be going on in your mind sir in which companies this act is applicable this you are not supposed to study all that is written in the payment of gratuity act 1972 and if we start studying that law we will divert from income tax act i am here to teach what income tax act 1961 but all this is written where in payment of gratuity act 1972 it's a different act it is just you should have a rough idea that yes there are some companies we don't know which companies but there are some companies where gratuity payment is compulsory and if you work in such company you are called poga employee poga employee okay but if you work in these companies which companies which companies other means where where gratuity payment is not compulsory where this act doesn't apply then you are not poga then you are an other employee see here i have written here other employee other employee other employee then who is the government employee the one who does government job see basically in this chart i wanted to show the three types of employee and you know why i want to explain this because depending upon the type of the employee we have to decide taxable, taxable exam how much exam it depends upon that only because whenever in the question you see gratuity first you have to check out that who is he is he government employee is he poga employee or other employee and how will you come to know if government employee they will write if poga employee also they will write nothing is given other employee see government employee they will have to write otherwise how can you know that he is a government employee only they will write in the question is working under government service even for poga they will write in the question you know what they will write the employee is covered by payment of gratuity act you know in a hindi batch in my hindi batch i say poga hoga to likha hoga poga hoga to likha hoga means if he is poga it will be written in the question that he is covered by payment of gratuity act 1972 only if it is written he is a poga employee but if problem doesn't say anything that means he is other employee try this if you can tell me here tell me this question we are not solving the sum just tell me who is he is anywhere it's written that he is a government employee nowhere it's written nor it is written that he is covered by payment of gratuity act that means he is another employee so in short you can easily identify whether it is a case of government employee poga employee or other employee okay but if someone asks you but sir what is poga employee poga employee means he is working in a company where gratuity payment is compulsory means you are more secured in case your company doesn't give gratuity you can file a case so it is good to be a poga employee because you are assured that you will get gratuity in case your company doesn't give you can file a case but it is bad to be other employee because other employee if they get gratuity it's their luck if they do not get it's their bad luck 
they cannot do anything because they are not covered by the act okay now the main point is in both the types of employees the formula is different see for poga employee this is the formula for exemption see government employee it is fully exempt but for poga employee it is fully or partly partly what was the logic i gave see this poga and other employees are basically employees of private sector and in the say in private sector sometimes the companies are so generous they give you huge amounts but government says sorry your boss is very generous he might be giving big big amount but we will exempt up to a limit and that limit is expressed in the form of a formula but in government employee why don't we put limit because government will never give you abnormal amounts they will always give you limit only so it is fully exempt okay so here the limit is what you know 1 2 3 which is less see first without understanding the formula what is the technique of solving you know gratuity first you will write in the inner column inner then you will write less exam under section 10 10 then 1 2 3 whichever is less that amount you minus like in hra what we used to do we compared three amounts which are is lower same here also here also this formula you will have to by heart but i don't want you to blindly by heart understand the logic and i will make you understand the logic but for the time you just read the formula once what does the formula say 15 upon 26 Fixed it is a fifteen upon twenty six multiply by salary, salary per month into number of years of service. See, this is number of years of service. And why we are talking about service? Because gratuity is given on retirement, so we have to see how many years service he has done. Say twenty years, so multiply by twenty. Then actual amount received means what is the actual gratuity you received? And twenty lakhs is a fixed amount. and this is the maximum limit means more than 20 lakhs you will not get the exemption but if this first figure is less then less maximum exemption will be 20 lakhs now you know in this formula what will irritate you what is the 15 upon 26 see if i ask you to buy it it is not a big deal you will buy it but this way if you keep biding there are so many things to bide one day you will get irritated and you will start hating the subject you will love the subject when you know when you know the logic so i will explain the logic of this 15 upon 20 is okay look at this now read in payment of gratuity act you know what this law says it is compulsory to give the gratuity why this act was made tell me don't see the screen first why this act was made because there are some companies and bosses who are ungrateful they are so arrogant and rude that employee who has worked for 20 20 years also they don't feel like saying thank you they don't give any money so for such ungrateful people there was a law now this law says what you know whether you have the feeling of thank you or not you will have to compulsorily give gratuity but how much for that also there is a rule how much look if employee has done one year service he should be given minimum 15 days salary means for each year of his service you have to respect 15 days salary that means if someone has worked for 40 years give him more respect the more you serve the more you deserve am i right think from employees point of view the more you serve the more you deserve it's right see if employees work for only 5 6 years he doesn't deserve much but if employees work for 40 years in a company will he not say 40 years i have given to this company so for each year you should be rewarded and what is the rule of this act for every year you should be given 15 days salary as minimum if boss says no i will give you more give more the law doesn't mind you giving more 
law is made why that don't be so mean and selfish that you don't give only you will have to give minimum 15 days salary for his one year service okay now try this example try this see my target is what you know through this explanation slowly i will take you to this formula and you will realize oh this is the logic slowly we will reach there but first what is this written this is not my rule this is written in payment of gratuity act that if employee works for one year you should give him minimum 15 days salary okay now imagine you are a poga employee and this is your status you retired after 20 years and your salary was 26000 per month now take it on you if you are poga employee how much you will demand from your boss what is your right for every year service you should get minimum 15 days so tell me what should be the right of mr x how much he should get 260 how much so see how did you do you know 15 days salary should be given but is this 15 days salary or full month full month. full month so normally what you will do this is full month so 15 days will be 13000 okay correct and this 13000 you will multiply by 20 years of service this is the way normally you will do see for one year service 15 days salary so first i want to find 15 days salary but is this 15 days salary or one month one month it is per month so 15 days salary you would logically think what 15 sorry 13000 but 13000 is for one year of your service but employee will say i didn't do one year service i have worked for 20 years so you will want 20 times of this okay but that is wrong see right now you know this 26000 rupees is one month and as per payment of gratuity act one month is 26 days one month is equal to 26 days yes i know sometimes in a month there are 30 days sometimes in a month there are 31 days in the month of feb sometimes 28 sometimes 29 i know that but on an average in a month there are 30 days and every month on an average there are four sundays and in four sundays do you go to office or you sleep at home you sleep at home so what are the working days 26 days are the working days and look salary is given for sleeping at home or working and your working is only 26 days so as per see this is not my thinking look this is the thinking of which law payment of gratuity act so this act says that we give salary to the staff for working but they don't work for full 30 31 days in a month they have got four sundays so they work only for 26 days actually this is an average average 30 days minus average four sundays now you might argue no sir some months there are five five sundays this is just an average working okay so look at this now look did you understand what i do now okay 26000 is salary of 26 days 15 days how much why why i want to find 15 days salary because the law says give him minimum 15 days salary if he has worked for one year so i want to find 15 days but our salary is monthly salary which is of 26 days so we have to convert it into 15 days by cross multiplication so tell me if you cross multiply what you get 15 multiply by 26000 per month divided by 26 so this comes to how much 15000 but this much should be given for one year of service 
Now tell me if your boss says, okay, your 15 days salary is this much, take it and go. No. You will fight. You will say the law says 15 days salary is for one year. And I didn't do service of one year. I have done 20 years year service. So you want 20 times of that. So that comes to how much? See, did you see I have multiplied by 20? Because this is 15 days salary which is your right for one year service. But the one who has done 20 years service, he will expect 20 times of that. So what is this relax then? This is the minimum amount you should get from your boss and if he doesn't give you, you can file a case. If he gives you more, say thank you and go. But if he gives you 5 rupees also less, you can file a case. This is the right given to you by payment or gratuity act. But this right you get only if you work in these companies. There are only some companies where this law is applicable. So let's assume we are working in that company. So you can exercise the right. And as per right, you should get minimum. Yeah. See, this is the minimum amount. Actually, you might get little. But this is the minimum amount which you should get. Now, just focus on this thing. Look at this thing. Are you using your brain now? Yes. See this thing and compare with this thing. Now did you understand how the formula has been derived? Check 1 to 1. 15 upon 26. Here also 15 upon 26. Okay. What was this? Salary, Salary per month. And what was 26,000 in my example? Salary per month. And multiply by 20 years is what? Number of years of service. And this is number of years of service. In short, I wanted to explain how this formula is derived. See, now you understand, oh, this means this is the minimum amount which he should get as per the Payment of Gratuity Act. And this is what he has actually received. So see, now what does income tax law say, you know? This minimum amount which Payment of Gratuity Act has promised you. If you, get that, if you get that much, we will exempt you. But if employees say, no, my boss is very generous. He didn't give me 3 lakhs. He gave me 13 lakhs. Then government will say, what, 13 lakhs? That means you are getting too much. Your right was 3 lakhs. Three lakhs but you got 13, 13 lakhs. lakhs. So what we will do? 3 lakhs exempt, balance 10 lakhs taxable. Try that 13 lakhs in the form of a statement. If employee would have got 13 lakhs, how will you present? In the statement, first 13 lakhs will come in inner column. Then let's exam under section 10, 10. First amount is this 3 lakhs only. Three actual amount received is 13. And there is one limit of 20 lakhs. So which is less? 3 lakhs. So that means you know, what law says that if you get too much from your boss, more than what is your right, then extra amount will be taxable. Yes, to the extent of 3 lakhs if you receive, that is the right given to you by POGA. So we will also exempt. But if you get more, it will be taxable. Okay, now answer. What if this 3 lakhs was 30 lakhs? Means I am changing instead of this 3 lakhs, what if this was 30 lakhs? 30 lakhs. So firstly 30 lakhs means what? it is your right to receive 30 lakhs. Mm -hmm. Now what income tax department will say, see we understand you have got right to receive 30 lakhs as per payment of gratuity act. But we will not exempt that much. We have a limitation, we can exempt maximum 20 lakhs. Obviously, received amount will be how much then? If your right is to receive 30 lakhs, employer should have definitely given you either 30 or more. He cannot give you less because this is the minimum gratuity which you should receive. So, if your minimum only comes to 30 lakhs, then obviously your boss should have actually given either 30 or more. So, let them give more. 
बट इनकम टैक्स डिपार्टमेंट से बी के नॉट एग्जेम यू मोर देन ट्वेंटी लैक्स सॉरी ऑल दो योर राइट इज थर्टी लैक्स एज पर पेमेंट ऑफ ग्रेचुटी एक्ट बट दैट इज अ डिफरेंट एक्ट अवर इनकम टैक्स एक्ट इज अ डिफरेंट एक्ट We have a limitation that we cannot exempt more than twenty lakhs. See, if your right as per poga is little less, government says exempt. But as per poga only, if your right comes to thirty lakhs, forty lakhs, then income tax has a limit of twenty lakhs. That is why this twenty lakhs is sitting in the formula. In any case, your exemption cannot exceed twenty lakhs. See, in this example, this came to thirty lakhs. And let's assume boss actually gave you thirty one lakhs, but our third amount is twenty lakhs fixed. So in which year is less twenty lakhs will come? But if this is three lakhs, you actually get four lakhs, and this twenty lakhs, then your full three lakhs is exempt. Means government is valuing this, respecting this first amount. Which first amount? This one. Government is respecting this first amount because this is your right. This much we want to exempt, but sometimes your right is thirty lakhs, forty lakhs. We will not exempt that much. We will exempt maximum twenty lakhs. Conclusion is what you know. Government has got two mind, two minds. First, they want to exempt whatever is your right, as per poga. They want to exempt it, but the second mind says not more than twenty. And whenever they have a double mind, we Put two two limits in the formula and do whichever is less. See actual amount why we are return because actual amount if it comes in the limits, it will become fully exempt. In short, the main thing was you should know this thing. Otherwise, see if I ask you to buy at buy at fifteen upon twenty six, you know it will irritate you. Why fifteen upon twenty six? But after understanding logic, it is nothing. Twenty six is what. it is a number of days in a month and your salary is always for one month and salary is given for working and your working days in a month is 26 days so if for 26 days it comes to 26000 15 days how much and why i am finding 15 days only because it is a rule in payment of gratuity act that for every year of service employee should be given minimum 15 days so that's why 15 days okay and this multiply by 20 years because this is your right for one year so if you work for 20 years so multiply by 20 now for other employees what do you mean by other employees these are working year see these other employees are working in some other companies where gratuity payment is not compulsory means your company If it wants to give you gratuity, they will give. If they do not want, they will not give. But if they give, what should be the reasonable amount which you should get? Is this look? What was my last sentence? If they give, what should be the reasonable amount which you should get? The reasonable amount is half of your salary. See, this half is you know it is not written in any act. Fifteen upon twenty six has come from payment of gratuity act. But this other employees are not governed by payment of gratuity act. But for them, income tax department says that other employee, if he gets gratuity, a reasonable amount would be half of the salary. Actually speaking, wait. This and this is same, but year fifteen upon twenty six, year fifteen upon thirty. But fifteen upon thirty, it sounds funny. In maths, you can cancel fifteen cut thirty cut one upon two. It can become half. But you know why difference in the thinking? Year twenty six days month, year thirty days. Why? Because here the thinking of payment of gratuity act is applicable, but this other employee do not have any godfather of payment of gratuity act. So for them, income tax act is applying its brain. That like a poga employee, if this employee also gets, they should get a reasonable amount of half of the salary. 
for every year for every year of their service okay but they are not taking 20 see they are taking 30 days only okay and see the main doubt a student will have what you know year 20 see year 30 why because there are two different acts in two different acts there are different provisions so in payment of gratuity act it is written that one month is or 26 days but here that act is not applicable so if act is not applicable we go by normal thinking a normal thinking says what one month is 30 days so go by normal thinking and according to that 15 upon 30 which will eventually become half rest everything is same see for this you know what what i should say this is the minimum amount which poga employee should get for this what you should say this is not the minimum amount which he should get if he receives this is a reasonable amount which he should be getting i hope you understand the tone see for other employees there is no compulsion he is working in such a company that he may not even get gratuity but if he gets he should get this much this is what income tax law feels and if he gets that much we will exempt also but then it should not be more than 20 lakhs huh? that is our maximum budget which we can exempt okay in short this half is the only difference here but one more difference tell me your salary means what see salary includes so many things see you get a monthly salary check in your salary check basic salary is there dearness allowance medical allowance this this so many things you get in a package don't we say it's my package yes. but what will be counted here it will be basic and da that's it and da whether in terms not in terms both da will come reason i will tell you and that also your latest salary latest means what do you know see gratuity matter arises at the time of retirement and throughout your service your salary kept changing so which salary should be taken as the base latest at the time of retirement see for example this employee he worked for 20 years every year his salary was not 26,000 when he joined he might have joined with 5,000 salary today it has become 26 and we have to take today's salary only see the definition is like this look you have to take the latest salary latest means not the salary which was there at the time of joining you have to do the latest at the time of retirement and in salary what you will take basic and da and that also both whether in terms not in terms see this is exceptional huh? rest all income tax formula we have our slogan in terms in formula not in terms not in formula in terms in formula not in terms not in formula everywhere follow that slogan but in poga employee in terms not in terms both ds will come can anyone explain the logic of this thinking wait logic part later first let me reveal this part also see here also there is salary okay and here salary means what you know average basic average da in terms average turnover commission average of preceding 10 months means in this formula we don't give too much importance to your latest salary see because here in this formula what we think at the time of retirement you are getting the highest salary and highest salary will give very big amount why to give importance to the latest salary on an average what was the salary but your average doesn't mean average of your 20 year service in the recent 10 months in the recent 10 months when you retired for example you retired in November so before that in the preceding 10 months what was your sal salary that average is taken and this 10 months is a fixed rule can you see i have written here average of see i will highlight average of 
preceding 10 months. See, logic of average is what you know. Here, we don't want to give importance to your last salary. Because an employee, when he retires, his last salary is the highest. I hope you understand this or not. Yes, yes. Anyone working in a company, his last salary will be his highest. Because salary keeps increasing. And when you retire, it is a topmost salary. But that topmost salary, they don't want to give importance. Because they feel, what if at the time of retirement, he might have just got the increment. Means throughout his life, his salary was 20,000. Suddenly, it became 30,000 on retirement. So, 30,000 should not be given importance. So, we want to take average. But now, average, if we take of his whole years, all years of service, it will be a wrong basis. Why? Because in his 20 years service, the time when he joined, he might have joined with 1000 rupees salary. That is very old data. So, if you take average, we cannot take very old data in consideration. We want the recent data. And recent means 10 months. It could have been 8 months also, 9 months also. It is the wish of the income tax department. They felt like taking 10 months. Now, don't argue on this. So, why 10 only? Okay, if you become the finance minister, make it 12 months. Make it 8 months. But the logic is we cannot take the average of full 20 years. Because in 20 years, the time when he joined, it is very old data. At that time, his salary was hardly 1000. We cannot see very old data. We want to see the recent data. And recent year means 10 months. And you know how to take 10 months? Preceding 10 months. Preceding means the month in which you retired. Ignore it. Just before that. For example, you retired in the month of December. Ignore December. Ignore December, then November, October, September, August, July, June, May, April, March, Feb. These are 10 months and 10 months salary you have to add and divide by 10. You have to find average. See how to exactly do this I will tell you. But can anyone tell me why there is a difference in the two formulas? Income tax is deriving that formula. Okay, see, one thing which you can guess is this is as per the thinking of payment of gratuity act. It is a different act. But for this poor other employees, there is no payment of gratuity act. So, whose thinking we are following? Income tax. And income tax believes in always three things basic, DA, turn or commission. This will find common. In all the formulas of income tax, you will find, you will get used to it. Basic, DA, turnover commission. And DA will always be in terms. So, because the thinking of income tax act is different and thinking of POGA is different, there is a difference in the meaning. And most important observation, POGA is for the favor of employees. You know, POGA wants employees should be protected. He should get maximum. That's why latest. You didn't understand. Basically, POGA employee, why, what is POGA tell me? Payment of Gratuity Act. Why this act was made? To protect the companies or protect the staff? Protect the staff. To protect the staff. So, basically, this act wants what do you know. Employees should get as much as possible. They deserve it. So, tell me, when employee can get maximum amount? If it is based on latest salary, means imagine employee's latest salary was 35,000, earlier it was 30. So imagine if it is based on 35, this whole amount will become big and he will get more amount. That is the mission of POGA, favor the employee, favor the employee. One more thing, why they have taken 26 days, employee will get more. Try, try. If instead of 26 days, if I would have taken 30 days, see what answer you get. Instead of 26 days, if I would have taken 30 days, calculate and see what amount you get. Tell me the final amount. Are you getting 3 lakhs or less? How much? 2 lakhs 60. You are getting less? 
an employee will get less but poga says no employee should get more and for that their thinking is why 30 days salary is giving for working and he is not working for 30 days he is working only for 26 days we will consider 26 days this way you know the law is trying to favor employee so that employee should get more see this act started why because employees were exploited they were not given gratuity so because of the exploitation the law got angry and they started the act so obviously the mentality will be to favor employees one more thing da in terms not in terms both see if here the rule would have been in terms in formula not in terms not in formula then amount will become less here also poga is trying to favor employee so what da is not it is a da take it not in terms take it in terms also take it and if you take it amount will become big in short are you understanding my feeling yes. i am trying to convince you on a point that here the poga is trying to make such rules so that employees should get more okay but here it is neutral means this for other employees who is applying the thinking poga or income tax law and they are neither biased towards employee nor towards employer they think fair that 26 days will favor more to employee so it lets be fair 30 days in a month and 30 days in a month so this will become automatically half 15 upon 30 is half only and then no average salary why to give importance to latest because latest salary is given importance so employee is getting more why should be given more let's be fair to boss also so here we are going as per the fair treatment neither doing partiality with employee nor with employer fair that's why average but Poga's mission is to do partiality with employee he should get more okay so these are the concepts okay now see one last thing in this number of years of service sometimes you will find fraction like for example look read this question mr x retired after completing a service of 24 years 9 months see when you retire it is not necessary that you will retire on exact end of the year means you don't count and retire whenever retirement comes it comes but when you count and see your actual service it comes in a fraction fraction you understood see 24 years is complete years but 9 months is full complete year or incomplete, incomplete. to complete a year you need 12 months is it 12 or 9? 9? So it is incomplete means it is in points, fraction, fraction. So what to do now? So here also there is a difference in Poga and other. See if you crib, what nonsense, here something different, here something different, you will get irritated. But if you convince yourself, difference has to be there. This is as per the thinking of payment or gratuity act. And for other employees, there is no godfather of payment of gratuity act. We go as per income tax act. So difference is bound to happen. So for POGA employee, you know what we do? If the service is like this, we, have should, we should see the fraction. If fraction is more than 6 months, then round off to the next number. 24 will become 25 years. Provided the fraction is more you know why i'm hammering on more not exact if it is exact six ignore it then 24 will remain 24 only if it is more more means about six months even if it is just one day usually they don't give data in days but in real life if it is six months one day so it is more then this 24 will be rounded off to 25 years but rounding off will be done only if the fraction is more than 6 months so here it is 9 months it is greater than 6 months so you will round it off to 25 years means in the formula what you will do 
You have to multiply this year. You will multiply by twenty-five years. Okay, but in other employees, ignore the fraction. Are you understanding the funda now? Poga is trying to favor employee. They are doing partiality that employee should get maximum. So see, if twenty-four years service is rounded out to twenty-five, so this amount will become big. And bigger this amount, that means poga employee will get bigger amount. And that is the mission of Payment of Gratuity Act to protect and secure the employees. Okay, but here you have to be unbiased. Unbiased means not partial. Don't favor employee so much. Be fair. Be fair means what? This nine months is not completed. It is incomplete here, so ignore it. Even if it is just ten months. it's incomplete here ignore it we will just take 24 only so in short one more difference you noticed here you have to round off the fraction here we don't round off the fraction okay in my hindi batch you know what i say poga round off hoga and if is not poga round off nahi hoga but poga to hoga होगा तो होगा हाउ विल यू कम टू नो इस पोगा पोगा होगा तो लिखा होगा दिस इज ऑल्सो हिंदी स्टेटमेंट मीन्स इफ इट इज पोगा इट विल बी रिटर्न इन द क्वेश्चन बट इन हिंदी इट राइम्स पोगा होगा तो लिखा होगा एंड इफ पोगा राउंड ऑफ होगा पोगा में सब होगा इन टर्म्स नॉट इन टर्म्स बोथ समटाइम्स आई हैव टू यूज हिंदी टू गिव द राइम ओके, सो बेस्ट थिंग इज टू रिमेम पोगा सब होगा मीन्स एवरीथिंग यू टू यस बी पॉजिटिव ओनली राउंड ऑफ यस राउंड ऑफ इन टर्म्स नॉट इन एस टेक बोथ ओके कैन यू आइडेंटिफाई द थ्री डिस्टिंगशन बिटवीन दिस टू फॉर्मूला थ्री डिस्टिंगशन डिस्टिंगशन नंबर वन यर इट इज फिफ्टीन बाय ट्वेंटी सिक्स यर इट इज हाफ सेकेंड डिस्टिंगशन यर सैलरी मीन्स latest basic per month latest da per month both and your salary means average basic per month average da in terms per month average turnover commission per month average of the preceding 10 months preceding and not that month preceding preceding third difference number of years in poga you can round off if the fraction is greater than 6 months But your rounding off is not allowed. Ignore the fraction. In short, three points you have to remember thoroughly, and gratuity is not a big deal in the sum. Okay. Now see, although the lectures time is over, but you know I am feeling incomplete. If I just leave it right now, please bear with me. I'll just take one small sum of gratuity, so that you know you will feel the completion. See, I don't go by time. I go by task. Okay, time or task, which is later. Think what I said. Time or task, which is later. If my task would have got finished early, then I would not leave early. Our lecture is till four o'clock, till four. But the task is unfinished. Forget four o'clock. Let us finish the task, which is later. basically see you know why i am so desperate to solve some look look here please understand my feeling this thing only when you solve when see you will feel confident while i am saying in the theory you will say yes 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 i understand understand but this is the something which is to be calculated okay wait wait what is the question wait i have a question ready made for you extra question from the book if you take there is pension leave salary other thing which are yet to come in my theory so we don't have an apt sum in the book so i have created one extra question you just solve it right now question you can write at home anyways this ipad notes i share you with in the mobile app so that time you can copy the question right now i have keep the question in front of you you just solve it and in the book you can name it as extra question do one thing in this book only you leave one page for the question only to write the question 
बिकॉज सी इन द अदर बुक वेर यू आर राइटिंग द थियरी नोट्स यू कीप इट सेपरेट बट दिस इज अ क्वेश्चन राइट सो राइट इट इन द सम बुक ओनली Yes, if you want, you can write in the question book also like this. Some student have got an idea that what if we write in the question book only, right? But this question should also become part of your book. Right now, don't write the question. It is in front of us. Let us start solving. Means what to do? First, prepare a statement. Keep the statement ready. Done. Okay, now read read the question. Mr. X retired on 30th November 23. As I told you, whenever the question is on retirement, you should draw a timeline. Otherwise, by mistake, what you will do? Anything which is given per month, you will multiply by 12 months. But if you retire, you will not get salary after retirement. So why 12 months? So see, I have done here. Look, first April twenty-three, thirty-first March twenty-four. This is our previous year. Okay, in that he has retired on. Thirtieth of November. After retirement, you don't get salary. Now see here. See what I have done. Look, he has retired on thirtieth November. Now check his basic salary. It was ten thousand per month up to thirtieth June. Note that, huh? It became twelve thousand from July. See this same thing I have plotted in the timeline. Can you see? Up to thirtieth June, his salary was. Are you looking at the question or not? See. It was ten thousand per month up to thirtieth June, and then it became twelve thousand. So you also present like this: ten thousand, and then it became twelve thousand, and that is per month amount, na per month. You can place a dot like this. This dot is thirtieth June, after which his salary has increased. And after number, he left the job only. He retired. So, can you tell me what will be his basic salary? See, till thirtieth June means how many months? April, May, June. So, for three months, it was ten thousand per month. Ten thousand per month. So, multiply by three months. That comes to thirty thousand, and then from July to thirtieth November, his salary was twelve thousand. So count July, August, September, October, November, five months. So twelve thousand per month multiplied by five months, that comes to sixty thousand. So this gives you what your basic salary. See how I've written. You also write like this. Ten 
टेन थाउजेंड इंटू थ्री मंथस ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड इंटू फाइव मंथस टोटल इज एट मंथस ओनली बिकॉज आफ्टर एट मंथस ही रिटायर्ड सी इन रिटायरमेंट सम बी केयरफुल इवन आफ्टर टीचिंग दिस वे इन द क्लास when i suddenly give some test students make a blunder like this only they blindly take 12 months so make it a rule only whenever the question is on retirement you will draw this timeline if you make some rules like this you will avoid the mistake yes in exam if you find less time you can avoid some things you can do it directly do the answer okay then see in the question what is next dns allowance how much it is 8000 8000 so how many months 8 months this 8000 is constant but only 8 months because on 30th november he retired so 8000 into 8 months that comes to 64000 then what is next conveyance allowance conveyance allowance did you notice it is an allowance yes. whenever you come across allowance you have to check in tc or tc udar and this is from tc udar c and what for tc udar what is the rule amount exempt is amount spent but how much is spent is not given assume fully spent see this you write somewhere in the notebook ha huh? If amount spent is not given in TC, उधर assume fully spent. You know why I am asking you to write because see, right now it is fresh. Imagine after two months, when you forget it, you will get these things as a doubt. Please write it right now only. Stop everything and write that. Write somewhere where you can refer it again and again. You can also write it in the theory notes. what you would write if amount spent is not given in tc udhar write this spelling of tc udhar properly ha yeah? u d h r i have seen students writing u d h a r udhar T C U D H R U D H R. So I repeat. Oh, it was like this only. So what did you write? If amount spent is not given in T C Udhar, then assume it is fully spent. Then assume it is fully spent. so fully spent fully exempt so see either you can write in the inner column then minus full or alternatively directly outer column dash anyways it's okay see i have written directly dash and in bracket exam under section 1014 exam under section 1014 then after that done that thing next point is gratuity okay now in gratuity first what you will check look whether is government employee poga employee other employee if government employee they will write if poga employee also they will write nothing is given other employee so check in our question have they written anything no nothing is given means he is a case of other employee okay and other employees question is worth solving you know why because of the concept of average, average and all see this will become little simple okay so this is little tricky because here some working is involved so in our question i have taken other employee only 
so tell me how will you do the presentation first write the given amount in the inner, inner column then what you will write tell me then what you will write less exempt less exempt under section 10, 10. you forgot exempt under section 10 10. 10 10 and then you will go to the working note because solving there only it will be very congested because you can see the big formula here and along with this formula there is something called average salary also okay so see you write gratuity in the inner column then write less exempt under section 10 1 sorry 10 10 sorry 10 10 and there if you want you can write a note like this note 1 14 lakhs gratuity in the inner column less exam under section 10 10 note 1 so now go to the notes you leave few lines for totaling up and those three deductions standard deduction entered in a profession tax leave that much margin and start the note write like this note 1 gratuity so first amount will be half into i will keep this as blank because this amount we will have to calculate how did we calculate it remember average of basic salary average of dearness allowance in terms average of turnover commission that average working you will have to do and then one figure will come here okay then multiply by number of years this you can write right now what is the number of years of service you know look 25 years 8 months what to do with 8 months sin poga we say poga round of hoga but he is not poga so round of nahi hoga means you will not round of you will ignore the fraction okay simply take 25 years so first amount you write like this half into some blank space into what was service 25 years is equal to some amount you will get okay then second amount means leave one line for that half into dash into 25 then leave one line then actual amount received actual amount received is 14 lakhs third amount is 20 maximum 20 lakhs 20 lakhs is fixed you to buy at this a 20 lakhs this is the main working now so see for this you will have to calculate what average salary now see for average what did i say read this average of preceding what do you mean by preceding ignore the month of retirement preceding means before that preceding means preceding before that so when did he retire in our question in our question he has retired on 30th november see here so now whether it is 30th november or first november november ignore it preceding will be starting from october now see you don't have to see whether it is first november or third november november should be ignored yes it will make difference 
if it is 30th november then he has taken full salary of november also see in actual life when boss will give you salary he will give you salary for november also take it on you if you are doing the job will you expect salary of november or not obviously you work till 30th so salary will be given for november but for average working ignore november see average salary is just a working note actual salary when you are given obviously you will also get salary for november see we have calculated also here we have given him full salary till november but in the working of average ignore november take preceding 10 months so see look here it is a first question let me show you how to do you don't do it on your own i know if i ask you to try you will be able to work out but i want to show a particular method and a system see you will prepare four columns month column basic salary da in terms and turnover commission why why this columns because see here what did i explain here you have to take basic da in terms and turnover commission three things are there so for three things three columns okay and then see what i have done look here when did he retire november so month of retirement i should ignore see i am putting a cross mark means i have ignored it now ignore november now count 10 months 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so the 10th month is jan now here even if you go to preceding year also it's okay many students think sir we cannot go beyond april april is the starting of our year let it be you have to strictly go backward 10 months go backward and when you are going backward don't consider the month of retirement see i have first cancelled it deliberately i have written with a different color because i don't want to count that so don't count november then you simply go backward october september this way how many months 10 so you know best what you should do in your notebook in the 11th line you should write november in the 11th line after writing this month heading 11th line you write november and cancel it why 11th so that you are left with 10 lines and automatically you write the month backward automatically you will arrange 10 months otherwise you will be counting error whether i have completed 10 months or not best is leave 10 lines and directly go to the 11th line go go with me right now see all this is happening after this huh this thing we have written after this this average is coming okay so in the month column write this your month count and reach 11th line see don't copy you should know how to do see to explain the trick i have drawn an arrow here this arrow is going upward means i am going reverse from down to up so in my 11th line i have written november and then i have cancelled also because that is the month of retirement we have to ignore it because loss is preceding 10 months so right reverse october september august july june may april march feb jan and when you reach jan automatically your lines will get over Okay, then done this thing. Come on, fast. Then basic salary. What is his basic salary? Look in the question. Wait, I will have to show the question. It was ten thousand till thirtieth June. 
So till 30th June, right? 10,000, 10,000, 10,000. See how I've written. Look. Look, look, look. Till 30th June. After that, it has become, see what? 12,000. Correct? Till 30th June, it was 10,000. So write 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000. Then after that it became 12,000. Now how to find average? Add all, divide by 10. Average means basic general maths. Add all the 10 items, add all 10 figures, then divide it by 10. Ten plus ten plus ten plus ten plus ten plus ten plus twelve plus twelve plus twelve. So total of basic salary is one lakh eight thousand. Then you divide by ten because since there are ten amounts to average out, you will divide by ten, and that comes to how much now? Ten thousand eight hundred per month. But this is only basic salary average we have taken. Okay, now what else you want? DA in terms. Wait. Let me check whether DA is in terms or not. Check. Check. Nothing is given. So we have to assume it is in terms. And in terms in formula. Not in terms, not in formula. But in case of POGA it is an exception. Huh? Poga, you will take both DS. But here it is other employee, I want in terms only and nothing is given so in terms. But in dearness allows there is no change. It has remained same. same. So see throughout I have written 8000, 8000, 8000, 8000, 8000, 8000, 8000, 8000. And turnover commission is not there in the sum. Nil, 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 nil. Add all divided by 10. See, since dearness allowance is constant, average will be same only. 8000, 8000, 8000, 8000. You add 10 times divided by 10, it will come to 8000 only. Turnover commission nil. So, this is average. Basic, look, average DA, average turnover commission, add. Please relate with the theory. This was taught to you in the theory right now. Check. Average basic plus average DA plus average turnover commission. So this thing we have done and we have come to an amount of 18,000. 800 per month. What to do with this figure? This will multiply by half. See here, I have already done, done it. I have already done it. 18,800 multiply by half. Eighteen thousand eight hundred per month. This is called average salary. Okay, then half into eighteen eight hundred into number of years of service in my question. It was how much? Twenty five years. Eight months. It was. But we have to ignore the fraction. Fraction should be rounded off in POGA employee. Then the amounts are ready. 2,35,000. 14 lakhs and 20 lakhs. Whichever is lower.
so what is less 2 lakhs 35000 now what to do this you minus as the exemption see gratuity we had already written 14 lakhs in the inner column and this 2 lakh 35 then we game we got to know from the working note 2 lakh 35 then from working note see meaning of this is what you know he received 14 lakhs but out of that 2 lakh 35 thousand is exempt actually what is 2 lakh 35 you know look this is the reasonable amount which he should be receiving Although for an other employee, it is not compulsory whether he will receive gratuity or not. But in case he receives, he should receive two lakh thirty-five. But we think his boss is so generous; he gave him fourteen lakhs. That is too much. So out of fourteen lakhs, two lakh thirty-five exam balance will be taxable. So gross salary total of all outer column. Thirteen lakhs nineteen thousand, standard deduction fifteen thousand fifty thousand and so on. Okay, finish it fast and tell me what if he was an he was a Poga employee. Just give me the changes orally, so you will feel the satisfaction of a Poga employee question also. wait first first finish those who are not done the sum finish it first complete this my question is if he is poga employee then what will be the changes ready Okay, tell me. Explain the changes here. This half will become fifteen upon twenty-six. Okay. Then first talk about this. Will this be eighteen thousand eight hundred? In Poga employees, salary means wait. Where was it? latest basic per month and latest da per month and both okay so use this knowledge and tell me in my question what is the latest basic 12000 12000 see 10000 was there earlier latest means at the time of retirement so latest basic 12000 per month and da was always same so even this becomes the latest da without bothering whether it is in terms or not in terms add both 20000 latest basic latest da 20000 remember the amount na 20000 so what will be the change this will become 15 upon 26 multiply by 20000 and number of years of service you will round off the fraction 25 will become 26 years did you see our service was what 25 and 8 months and 8 is more than 6 months so round off see more than 6 is like more than half year so you can round off and make it 26 years so then what will be the change this amount will be 3 lakhs And then one, two, three, which are is less will be three lakhs. Accordingly, here minus three lakhs, and so on. In short, see, Poga employees. In fact, simple. In Poga employee, you don't have to do this moderation. That is why I did a question of other employee because there everything is covered nicely. Now, once other employees and Poga employees, nothing. In Poga employee, what you have to do? Just fifteen by twenty six instead of half. And in salary, you don't have to do the working of average. Pick up the latest basic and latest you add. And in number of years, you have to round off the fraction if it is greater than six months. So gratuity we have completed. Okay, we'll continue in the next lecture. My next lecture will come on Monday.
tomorrow i think it is arshad khan's lecture okay law lecture is there so ha huh? monday 1 o'clock my slot will be 1 o'clock 1 o'clock first slot only so next my slot will be more or less fixed only every week monday to friday 1 to 4 okay 4 or as the case will be okay bye revise and come please revise and come and update this notes in ipad i will share with you soon